Welcome Libra to your in-depth monthly forecast for August 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to share the event chart right at the start of the month shortly on screen but before I do I just want to tell you about a very special opportunity. If you order your unique personal horoscope for year 2025 now I'll give you the rest of year 2024 free, plus you'll get 30% off and also your life roadmap report. Please see the link beneath this video so you can check this out. If you know your tropical astrology really well, why not check out my Draconic version? Same offer, the rest of this year free, all of 25, plus your Draconic character analysis and also 30% off. On the screen now, I'm sharing the event chart right at the start of the month. As ever, we can be mindful of your ruler, Venus, and I will explore that with you shortly. But the big picture as you come into this month is the sun and your ruler are in the most sociable part of your chart, house 11. But that's also where we connect to people, we network and we plan for the future. It's also where we can be most aspirational beyond the physical realm. But you also have a cluster of energy in your sister air sign of Gemini, which is very much to do with being more adventurous, potentially traveling, looking at opportunities for higher education and just bring in some freshness and spontaneity into your world. Now then, let's just be mindful of the role of your ruler Venus. So it is coming to the end of its journey through Leo at the start of this month, but it is tested by the disruption that Uranus can bring. So they're in a square as we start this month. Now Uranus continues as it has since 2019 full time in your eighth house, which can be about deep psychological change, but it also can be where we're most devoted and invested. But that's tricky with Uranus because Uranus in a way is seeing us resist any closeness and investment, which doesn't quite feel right because Uranus essentially is about getting in touch with what is most authentic. So as much as there may be a friend or someone you're drawn to romantically, and you may actually find the spark is very strong at the start of this month, just ask yourself if it's really what you want. Now on the other hand, if you're in a relationship and you've been in it for a long time and it's not actually meeting your needs, this can be a very powerful month and it could see you want to break free, but it really is your core because the energy in the sign of Gemini can be about freedom. And because of the energy in Leo is about your future, the two have to work well together. So if there is someone you really like, and there could be quite a, a, a charismatic connection, not least because the North Node and Chiron continue in your seventh house of relating, and they're actually blessed at the start of this month by the Sun, also by Mars, but also uh, by Venus linking to the position of Chiron. So if there is someone that you do feel that there's something to work on with, I think the principal theme has got to be truth. There has to be a sense that your values are being met and that's because of the energy in Gemini, the ninth house. And that's very much to do with feeling that there is some clarity and purpose and meaning in our connection. So that's the backdrop as we go into the new month. But there is some awkward stuff, to be honest. The moon in your ninth house, very much about travel and those higher truths, is clashing with the position of Neptune. Logical area at the start of this month, clashing with Mars in house nine. So as much as those energies on the face of it in Gemini point towards freedom, independence and travel and exploring, um, and the energy in Leo is very much about long-term connections, your highest hopes, and potentially friendships. There are some complexities in this situation because of the players in Pisces, Saturn and Neptune, and because Mercury in Virgo, your 12th house. And that's really the story at the start of this month. However, there is cause for great optimism because the Sun forges an amazing link with Mars right at the start of this month. 
And if there is someone that you do feel very aligned to, that combination can give you a lot of self-belief and confidence, even quite a lot of extra energy to make that step forward. Also, Jupiter, the planet of growth, is linking brilliantly to the sun from the 3rd through to the 9th and feeds into a glorious new moon on the 4th, which provides a backdrop for the following month. If there is something that you're really inspired by, maybe it's a... Uh, an interest or a hobby that's been emerging for you. It could be a group of people. Maybe it is a social meetup. Maybe uh, it's a collective that you find very inspirational. That inspiration can really be enhanced with the help of Jupiter for sure. But then Venus moves your ruler into your 12th house on the 5th. Now, you may know that Venus is in its fall in Virgo. So what happens here is that Virgo, of course, can be very precise. It can be very cool. Venus relies on the charm of your sign and the sultry sensuality of the other sign she rules of Taurus. So in Virgo, it's a bit picky, but it could see you if you're not happy and you do feel that someone in some way is expecting far too much from you and not giving much back. That could be an important development because Venus then goes on to go into an opposition with Saturn between the 17th and the 21st. So whether it's a work relationship, a friendship or the romance, if there is something that has been difficult to get into the open and someone's resisting the part of you that wants to shape things up, be more dynamic, be more di dashing, if someone's very stuck in their ways and holding you to account in some ways, whether it is a job or a relationship, with also Mercury going retrograde on the 5th, that can see you rethink your psychological perspectives. And that too goes opposite Neptune. But it also means that from the 10th to the 19th, you could be told something that's not true. Because Mercury is about communication. Neptune can distort. But the position that they're in means that the as more you try to get to the truth, Mercury and Venus in 12, or perhaps withdraw a little bit to find out what you really want, the more that someone could be evasive or very critical, Saturn in 6, Neptune in 6. Just be ready for that. However, there is a fantastic alliance between Mars and Jupiter that builds up this month and really peaks on the 14th. And if you are going to travel somewhere and you want to do something more daring and you want to also break free of the crushing sense that you always have to be the good egg, the person who, you know, will be very responsible for people, which has really been emphasised by that energy in Pisces. And of course, the fourth house energy you've had with Pluto is also... Uh, been very very deep and difficult to get through since 2008 so the combination between Mars and Jupiter could see you very much in the mood to think that's it the 12th house energy with Venus and Mercury I've had enough um, I'm always bending to other people's needs trying to give them what they want but now I'm going to do something for me and that could see you jet off somewhere go away for a long weekend uh, do something that's more physical, more rugged, more adventurous, or it could be that you're going to sign up for some kind of course which gives you a lot of extra information or knowledge or even a new diploma or degree because Jupiter can be about knowledge but Mars can be about desire. But on the 15th, Mercury inverts back into Leo. And in a way, I actually think this is a good thing. If you set your stall out, made it clear about what you want to accept around certain situations. Someone may try to woo you back, whether it's a boss, a friend, or that relationship. Just be aware that if it is going to work out, it really has to be in a way that you feel very confident that your need for stimulation and change and, and some excitement uh, is really going to be met. And on the 19th, there's a Cassini, which despite the retrograde amplifies, the sun amplifies the values of Mercury. And this can give you a huge insight into what you really want from your future. But then on the 19th, the full moon in Aquarius, your sister air sign, is a choice. 
And the choice could be between a particular group of people or a particular person you, you've been attracted to. But because Uranus is applying to both positions in a T-square, if it does require you to give in to something where you're not feeling you're getting something out, I think you may decide to spin out and do something for you. And that's entirely understandable, and particularly because the Moon being in Aquarius and Pluto being there too is about your need uh, your needs are supposed to the needs of the group. But then on the 22nd, the Sun does move into Virgo. On the 28th, Mercury goes direct in Leo, but the move of the Sun into Virgo does suggest that you may do some deep thinking towards the end of this month. But I want to reassure you, Venus is joining your sign, your ruler, on the 29th. And whatever you go through, whether it is about a, a job, an interest, a group of people, a friendship, a love affair, whatever you go through, it's all going to become much more clear to you by the end of the month what your true pathway forward is about. And do you know, as the month comes to a close, Mars and Jupiter are still pushing you to be more explorative, but this time it can be much more on your terms. So essentially the energy that seesawing across the sign of Virgo through Mercury and Venus and then ultimately the Sun and the position of Saturn and Neptune in House 6 where you feel very responsible and obligated, the 12th house is much more psychological, that competes with the bright warmth and radiance that definitely permeates into your situation at the start of this month. So there could be some deep searching, soul searching as this month goes on the Mercury retrograde could be particularly psychologically snaggy. You may feel that certain people aren't keeping you in the loop or staying in touch, which could be very disappointing. But you're going to get your hand on your life tiller in a very firm way by the end of this month. And whoever is truly worthy of you will be revealed as this month comes to a close. It's been a real pleasure being with you. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored if you did so now. About 50% of people who watch my videos are not subscribers. Please help the channel to grow by clicking that sub button and also that bell notification symbol. And please check out that special offer below.